Hello and welcome to the NDTV Dialogues, a conversation of ideas. This week, of course, it's been one year since the demonetization dhamaka. Anti-black money, black day, the rhetoric goes back and forth. But we try to go beyond that in this dialogue. Joining us is Dr. Sujit Palla, member of the Prime Minister's Economic Advisory Council. Also, Shorya Doval, director of the India Foundation, a prominent think tank, of course, with many senior cabinet ministers as its advisors. I'm also joined by Sushmita Deb, the head of the Mahila Congress, Lok Sabha MP. Also with me, Ashutosh of AAP. And joining me from Mumbai is Mahesh Pyas, managing director and CEO of the Center for Monitoring the Indian Economy. Thank you all very much for joining us. Dr. Palla, as I said, we've seen the rhetoric back and forth. You've written an article this week praising demonetization and what you think have been the benefits of it and haven't been analyzed properly. Just if you had to look at the biggest hit and the biggest miss, because as an economist, hmm. you know that both are true. Well, <coughs> it's a good question about the biggest miss. Um, and I, I think I can say in the future uh, what the biggest miss would be if demonetization was not to able to increase tax compliance. For mm -hmm. me, that is the sin qua non of demonetization. So if that weren't to happen and continue to happen, it's already happened to a fair degree, but let us say for some reason tax compliance, we go back to our old fashioned ways, then I think uh, it would be a big miss and in my view <coughs> demonetization could be termed accurately as a failure. Mm -hmm. um, to date, we have evidence for one year post demonetization, we have evidence for tax compliance till October and it's looking shockingly good. That okay. is, there's a genuine increase. Remember, you know, just to explain it very simply, the tax compliance has to do with how much of the income you collect as taxes. Okay? As it happens, last year, the income growth has been one of the lowest in nominal terms. This is not real terms, not complicated, it's simple. What is the current income and the growth in that current income? No calculations of inflation are needed. Indeed, more inflation is there, more the tax revenue will go up. Right. Okay. And so we have had at 7.9% one of the lowest income growths in the last 20 years. It's the sixth lowest actually. So despite that low growth and the government had budgeted and all of us at ND, you know, when we covered the budget, it said that the income growth would be 11.8%. The 11.8 percent was the budgeted growth, expected growth, and it's, and it's 7.9. Mm -hmm. Despite that, the tax revenue collected from personal income tax and corporation income tax is exactly now equal to what was budgeted. 15.6 percent was budgeted, and the data just came out till October. It was 15.3. Shorya Doval, if you could come in on that, because. We've seen the numbers spun so many ways around depending on which uh, political party or ideology it's coming from and uh, of course uh, the income growth uh, dropping would be something that the opposition pick up. But of course interestingly again we've heard another prominent economist, the ex-Prime Minister Manmohan Singh just this week talk in Surat and talk about the fact that 21,000 jobs were lost in Surat alone. So in the sense being that we seem to shift the goalposts of what demonetization is meant to have achieved constantly. Now it's one year later, we hear some ministers, uh, Jain Sinha was of course a part of India Foundation as well, describing it as a miracle. You've heard Ravi Shankar Prasad saying, look at this, even flesh trade has come down. What do you, as somebody who runs a private fund as well, what to you is the big gain? Was it worth the pain? So first, the examples that you cited, let's put them in context, right? I mean, Dr. Manmohan Singh, when he was speaking in Gujarat, he was in the midst of an election campaign. What did you what expect him? What expect? Do, else do you expect but him to say? But it was a political switch. To be fair, he talked also. He praised the Prime Minister for, as Chief Minister who had come out and supported GST. He, he did talk no, about so, that. So, so I'm saying, by and large, you've got to, uh, you know, sort of keep this in, in, in context. Uh, of when you, when you, you know, you're citing the, the sort of the political debate around it. The way I look at it, you know, since you asked me that how do I look at it both as a practitioner and as well as somebody who sort of watches uh, policy from a, from a distance. Uh, see, I look and at not it… Not from a distance because that's a… Uh, the <laughs> well, ministers are actually… We can have a separate debate yeah, on that. Sure, yeah. But, you know, but, you know… No, but closely involved, let's say. But the way I look <coughs> at it is that there were, there were three elements to this. Mm -hmm. There was definitely a political element to it, which to me was actually the most powerful one, which is a political signal 
to the country and to the world at large that we are serious about fighting the malaise of corruption. Uh, and it, this was in one of the many steps that this government has taken. So whether it was, uh, you know, the black money bill or you know, GST or things like that. But this was, at least in my recent history, I cannot see any political leader come out with such a decisive political signal. And by the way, we, you know, we won't dwell on it, but signaling is a very, very important factor in politics, actually in the destinies of countries. You know, that's how, that's how nations move. So there was a political signal that we are, we are going to fight the scourge of black money and we are very serious about it. So this is the political aspect of it. There was an uh, aspect of it which was the, the, the economic aspect of it which uh, Dr. Bhalla mentioned which was trying to improve the income tax catchment area or improve, improve effectively the tax to the GDP ratio. Now, the jury on that is still going to be out, but as you mentioned, there, is, there are signals that are driving that uh, in, in that direction. And finally, uh, there was this desire to move India towards a more cashless economy. And, you know, Nandan, and he is no cheerleader for this government, has actually come out uh, recently, in this, I think, yeah. the same day yes, as you... With the as your, map, the yeah, which is saying that this has been, the, this has been some of one of the biggest movements in India's move towards a cashless economy. Mm -hmm. So I think if, if I sort of uh, rate them or rank them in this order of their significance, then I think, of course, the political signal definitely has been, has been very well received. And I think, uh, by and large, there is consensus. I mean, and, and you know, and, and there is only way, as I told you in our last debate, that we will continue to evaluate these at uh, the hustings whether uh, the the political signal is being well received. Uh, in terms of the economic movement, we will see data. I just want to bring in uh, Sushmita Deep on that because, in fact, yes, we are last as before the UP elections, and if nothing else, uh, as you said, the UP elections will be a referendum, and they were in a sense of demonetization. Sushmita Deep, come in on that. This is a political signal which comes. Rarely, say, in the course of a nation, it's almost a turning point in this nation's uh, political history, as uh, Shaurya Dawood puts it. Do you buy that argument that, in that sense, the most potent political signal was that forget the numbers, this is the Prime Minister acting against corruption? See, um, as a politician, we can't deny the fact that Prime Minister Modi got a historical mandate. There was a huge amount of trust in him. And on 8th of November, when he announced uh, that the uh, no currency was going to be demonetized, and he set out the reasons for it, people believed him. People believed him. And I think that the instant impact of demonetization was not felt very quickly. Because people thought we are going through some pain, but there are going to be some benefit. So the instant uh, pitfalls of demonetization, no one reacted to it. Because the narrative was uh, Desh Bhakti, this is nationalism. But I have to say that as time went goes on, and we have completed one year, I have to say that what has unfolded in the unorganized sector, in the agricultural sector, when it comes to jobs, it is very easy for us to sit in a studio and discuss it. But if you were to go out there, there is a huge section of people who have suffered. Some of the damage will recover, like Mr. Bhalla said, but some of the damage that happened because of demonetization is you cannot roll back on it. But should we, let me begin Ashutosh on that because uh, the people who we say are suffering are the people who are in a sense voting for the BJP. So let's see how these two elections now do as well. But Ashutosh, the BJP, the Prime Minister established as a crusade against corruption. I mean, Arvind Kejriwal once had that image and in fact originally he supported demonetization as well. Why has that changed and do you think in that sense the BJP has stolen a march on the Aam Aadmi Party? Do you see it as the party without corruption or the fighting against corruption? See, Sonia, first of all, if a learned uh, minister like Ravishankar Prasad if he says the success of demonetization can be measured by the decline in the prostitution, that itself shows the frustration of the government. Why we are talking about the cashless economy? On the day 8th November 8 p.m., Mr. Prime Minister, while talking about the demonetization, has mentioned four things. One, it will lead to decline in the terrorism, decline in the fake currency, decline in the, in the drugs, and the decline into the black money. Now, if the success and the failure of the demonetization has to be monitored, has to be monitored on these four parameters, because that was the aim and objective of the demonetization. Not really. You can, no, have, no, no. You can have other benefits and let losses me which you can avoid. So, let me complete. Let yes. me complete. I will go by the Prime Minister. I will not go by what Mr. Bhalla is saying or what Mr. Arun Jaitley is saying, because it is he who on the national television channels at 8 p.m. has announced this. That was the prime objective. 
what has happened to the black 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 uh, black money you spent 21000 crores and you got only 16000 crores 99% of the money has come back what happened to the black money is it a smart governance or a smart business i do not know what happened to the terrorism terrorism in the kashmir in the last one year is is on the rise every day it's the our own soldiers but are dying violence is down the fake Nuts currency the violence has come down 500 crores estimated 500 crores fake currency what at, at that point of time how much we have recovered 47.9 crores what happened to the rest and what about the drug drug market now people are now the people are changing goal post because demonetization has completely failed and exposed mr narendra modi but you're not answering the question on corruption do you feel that in that sense the prime minister had sent out a signal which was a strong one which is almost say perhaps what signal no you are no, uh, you tell no, me what you what think what signal the black the, the black money of the bjp leaders has become white otherwise there is no reason that 99% of the money is coming back into, into the system i am asking <laughs> i am asking this question today here that please if at all you want to if you want to test the success of this test on these four whether the terrorism has declined whether the fake currency has declined whether the drug has, has <coughs> declined or whether the black money has declined on all these four parameters mr modi has failed completely i'm going to come back on that point but i want <coughs> to bring in mahesh vyas uh, really uh, the independent voice in a sense on this uh, just looking at the numbers as we i asked i began by asking professor bhalla the big hit and the big miss the big miss and what has created much debate is the latest report by the cmie mr vyas which points to the fact that uh, one and a half million jobs lost in these latest months now The jury is out on whether you can actually look at blaming this on demonetization or not. Uh, Ex Prime Minister Manmohan Singh would, uh, Surjit Bhalla has pointed out that you not looked at this as year on year. What is your what is your take? Cutting through, as I said, the rhetoric. What would you say is the reality on demonetization's impact on jobs? Well, we measure employment. We uh, measure unemployment and employment together, and we have seen a decline in people employed. Uh, in January April 2017 compared to how many people are employed in September December 2016 mm -hmm. we have seen this decline continue during the May August period when another nearly half a million jobs were lost or there was a decline in the number of people employed now i have good reason to i have a kind of a reason to believe that at least some of this loss is because of demonetization in the preceding rounds we have seen persistently employment to increase so from <coughs> jan april 2016 when we go to the next round may august 2016 there was an increase there's an increase further in september december 2016 so in each of the three rounds that we did surveys in 2016 we did see an increase but then there was a decline sequentially in the people employed in jan april and may august mm -hmm. we continue to see small declines in employment even in the september december 2017 survey right. so this seems to suggest and this is no proof but uh, this seems to suggest that demonetization did impact employment there are anecdotal evidences to add up to this as well we have seen so many surveys done by uh, media companies showing that there are job losses in industrial towns so if you take that and this data into consideration i think there is some merit to say that demonetization did play a role in the fall in employment and therefore there were job losses because of that so i would not say that all these job losses are because of demonetization mm -hmm. because we have to do a seasonal adjustment surjit has done a year on year comparison and has found that there is an increase in jobs but a year on year comparison is like he says it is comparing likes with likes but that is still not seasonally adjusted for seasonal adjustment we require a longer time series to know what the trend factor is what the seasonal factor is and what the random factor is we are a far distance we are a distance from there to make those estimations because the time series is too short as yet let me bring up professor bhalla and in a sense uh, mr vyas has given your argument as well to answer that but just looking talking about anecdotal evidence along with the data because the fact remains that when you go 
when you go out, when you go report from Surat, when you report from Kanpur, when you report from Varanasi, you do see people saying they're in pain. I'd also like to bring out the fact that Ashutosh uh, Chatter been bringing out that this has just become about, say, BGP leaders turning black into white. Arun Shori saying that this has uh, been the biggest money laundering scheme. You're saying it's okay, it's, it's actually a good thing that this money has come back and now the tax authorities will look at it. Does that all add up? Oh, absolutely adds up. And the only <coughs> uh, problem is whether the tax authorities, which we do not know, will look at it. They certainly have all the data in the world to look at it. Uh, but you know, this is, look Sonia, this is a family program. I don't want to get into uh, esoteric debates with Mahesh. I think he's quite wrong on the year-on-year -year comparison. Nobody does seasonal adjustment on year-on-year -year comparisons. I think he's quite, quite wrong. Let's look at his own data and then I'll come to other you do do data that corroborates. But you do do quarter comparisons, but you do do quarter comparisons on no, whether no. it's industrial Your, growth. When I you do year on year, if I'm comparing January to March, seasonality has to do with months. Something peculiar happens, Diwali month, people on holidays and so on and so forth. Right. So whether I do January to March or April to August or September to December, when I compare with the same period, the next year or the year before, you're taking into account yeah. all the seasonal. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, as I said, this is a family program. I don't want to get into the econometrics of it. But just let me put on the table, he's quite, quite wrong. But let's look at some other evidence. And I would offer that uh, as supporting the CMI data. And nobody, but nobody has countered that. And that's the following. And I, I offer this as a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Look, I myself believe, and I, my calculations do suggest that GDP growth declined by something like 0.3 or 0.4 percent on an annual basis. No question that there was a impact uh, on employment, on employment potentially, and on output. Um, so that's there. The question is, and here's the puzzle, the people who lost out potentially were the poor, the bottom 50 percent, the bottom 75 percent. To be sure, the top 5%, the ones who have the black money, really lost out, which I think is a real positive aspect of demonetization because they are now have to pay more taxes potentially or incur legal costs to prevent them from paying taxes. But we should really be concerned about the bottom 50, bottom 60, mm -hmm. bottom 70. Agricultural wages, which have nothing to do with the CMI data, show that basic and which has been collected since 1960 right. show that whether you look at unskilled workers in rural areas or skilled workers in rural areas, both of them show a real wage increase during January to September or January to August, which is the last data we have, of about 4 to 5 percent. So that's and that it's the highest in the last five years. So how do you explain? These are the guys who are supposed to have lost jobs. SMEs. You know, we keep every TV program I turn to never offers one piece of data on the job loss. For example, Surat. Now, you know, 21,000 jobs. The employment in this country is 400 million. Obviously, some places are losing, some places are gaining. We should be concerned about the aggregate. I can point to people who've lost jobs, and you can point to people who've gained jobs. So let's look at the aggregate. No, but you and, know, and the CMI has given us the data. Surat's an industrial hub, so I do think that sometimes if you look at an aggregate, that may not add up. But I want to just bring in Shore, because yeah. Shore, you made that point on corruption, and I want to perhaps ask you on that what the opposition has been raising. Why is it that we say corruption as if the BJP is somehow immune from this horrible virus. I mean, when questions, when the opposition raises questions about whether it's the BGP president's son, which was raised up the wire, whether there is, uh, you had the wire right questions about whether you're involved in lobbying, when, how come when questions are raised about BGP leaders, that's not considered corruption, whether it's the Vyapam scam, where, of course, the chief minister now has a clean shit, whether it's Panama Papers, in which the chief minister's son may be named, why is that not considered as legitimate charges of corruption, as much as it may have been against Congress uh, members and their families, etc.? Why is that not... Uh, in, why is it not seen as a level playing field? It's not seen as a level playing field. And, you know, the, the answer to that is, as, as Zashatas was saying, that when the Prime Minister spoke on that day, the Prime Minister of India doesn't score a debating points, right? He was effectively articulating, you may agree or disagree, with a certain policy. The answer to your question isn't that thing, that today, tell me which individual in India thinks Modi is corrupt other than his political party, other than, you know, political opponents. The fact is that the credibility of the Prime Minister is very high, uh, you know, 
you can have political argument and say that you know whatever you want to but the fact that the prime minister is not seen to be corrupt the fact the prime minister seems to be going after corrupt people the fact that uh, he seems to be doing something about it because everybody successively had spoken about this malaise and everybody said well, we are just helpless this is what status quo is and though nobody saw ex-prime minister Manmohan Singh as corrupt either no but yeah. nobody saw Manmohan Singh as uh, corrupt absolutely but nobody saw Manmohan Singh act against corruption See, the Prime Minister of India is not, it's not just about his personal integrity, but his desire to do something about it. Now, you could argue that the whole, okay, the, many people got together and gamed the system and therefore all this money came back and therefore that means Modi was defeated. But the fact of the matter remains that the, that, that the, the, the Prime Minister is uh, doing something about it. And that's the reason that the, uh, the critics, uh, the, uh, the argument against him doesn't stick. And it doesn't stick politically. And if it will stick politically, we will see it at the hustings. Mm -hmm. But if we continue to see evidence, as 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 uh, she pointed out, that you know, when Mr. Modi said uh, on certain that people believed him, well, what if the if the results come out in in January of 2000 or December of 2017, will we believe that even one and a half years later, people continue to still believe him? Sushmita, see, I want to say this holier than thou attitude about this is my crusade against corruption. I want to ask a very simple question to uh, an economist and somebody who is a think tank that really is it your objective view that demonetization was necessary to counter corruption? I mean that was just the political message. Ask any economic uh, advisor and no one was advised. I don't think even you were advised when he took this decision or the economic advisor, chief economic advisor of the country. There are ways to fight corruption. There are ways to fight black money. When you look at the policy of a government, whether you like it or not, people will judge your means and people will judge the end. And there are hundreds of ways of fighting corruptions that the BJP government could have been done, whether it's a Lokpal, whether it is anything like that. So. Prime Minister Modi announced on 8th of November that his key objective was corruption. And has it ended today? It has not. Because if you are really interested in removing corruption from India, believe me, to suck out 86% of the cash from the economy is not the answer. That's a bad political strategy as far as I'm concerned. And if we're admitting that the growth rate has gone down by 1%, 2%, whatever the learned economists are saying, what is the cost of the economy? I mean, wh where's the justification? Where's the justification? Ashutosh, why don't you go ahead and I'll get you a short answer. Go ahead, Ashutosh. What is on this uh, sh uh, Shorya maintaining that in the sense that the Prime Minister is seen as somebody not only who is personally not corrupt, but also somebody who has the intent to act against corruption? See, firstly, I would like to respond to what uh, Dr. Surjit Bhalla has said. I think you go to the job market and you will get to know whether the jobs are created or not. I, that's why I, I fail to understand his logic. Today, the youth in the country and the job market is so shrunk. People are out, nobody is getting a job. So if you deny this, for, if you deny this reality, then I don't know what to, what to answer that. Well, Dr. Bhalla is now advising the Prime Minister no, as well on the no, Council, no, so you should really listen, 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 listen to what he's saying. Ask Mahesh Vyas, his survey is showing that No, he's just come on the Council, so we can't can blame can demonetization <laughs> on him, so Shmita, the Congress can't. No, but go ahead. Taking the See, demonetization is taking 1.5 million it. jobs from this country. Manufacturing sector is down. No, that's uh, yeah. Though Mahesh yeah. Vyasu, author that See, says you can't only blame let, demonetization. Let yes. Manufacturing sector is down from 12.7 to 5.3%. Now, construction business is down. Real estate business is down. The informal business is completely wiped out. And if you still maintain that the job market is, is improving, I don't know what to say. About sure, I think, let's not talk about the corruption, the, whether the Prime Minister is corrupt or not. The Sahara and Bella diary is there. Let, let it get, why don't uh, the agencies go and investigate, investigate those, okay. those, those diaries? But the Mr. Lalkis Adwani has resigned on these issues. But and the if Supreme you, Court no, did, let me, yes. let, let, let you pump it. You are inducting Sukhara who is a convicted on the charges of corruption in Telecom in 1998. You are, you are, in, you are inducting Mukul Roy in your party. And, and you still you have the cheeks to say that Prime Minister Shardas is not corrupt can. and he, he doesn't harbour corruption. I do not what I do not know what to say. This this brazenness of the BJP and the and, and the think tank of the BJP, only the uh, I, I, I I I'm really at loss of loss of words. The fact today is that Indian economy is touching 5.7. That itself is an indicator that there is something seriously wrong with this so country's the, so economic management. the projection management. is that it will go up, but I think the larger points and maybe uh, Dr. Palal get you in as well on that because in a sense that point made that the almost.
the economic message and the Prime Minister managed to do that quite cleverly that he's managed uh, to be above the, uh, say, personal allegations completely and he sent out a strong message, perhaps with demonetization, other issues. But the fact is that when it comes to politics as usual, the BGP hasn't shown itself to be any different from the Congress and I think the points Ashutosh made about Mukul Roy, Sukram and his son being put in means that it's okay if you come into the BJP and then you're cleansed. I think the, that whole thing is going about that it's kind of Ganga Snan if you join the BJP. I mean, that's, that surely is not, uh, is ridiculous. Yeah, no, look, uh, <coughs> there is the politics of corruption and there's the economics of corruption. Um, I think in totality, and I want to answer her question, which was a very legitimate one, that whether there is any whether the demonetization can be just, whether some other method could have been used rather than demonetization. And let me tell you, as a student, and back in 2002, as a student, and this paper was done for the Ministry of Finance, when I first estimated the amount of corruption in India in terms of tax evasion, at that time, it was 85%. 85% of the income earned by Indians, professionals, Lawyers, doctors, engineers, industrialists, well, you The number it. of cars bought as compared to people yeah, filing 85 tax. 85% of with. the money was not given in, that should have been given in taxes. So I have been on this issue for a very, very long time. And that makes it about 14, 15 years. And, you know, I've thought about what could have been done. I certainly was not consulted on maybe um, I should have been Are consulted. Are you saying thank God? But <laughs> I, 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 I remember. <laughs> and actually, it's a very serious point. I, when the demonetization happened, November 8th, um, I was, you know, maybe in your program or somebody's, and I said that, listen, you know, as an economist, I would not advocate demonetization because I'm not trained to think either politically or, most importantly, to think without evidence. There is no evidence of any kind of demonetization such as that was practiced in India. And which is why all the economists, all the great economists, some are supporting it, but all the great economists are saying they would have said no. And this is the reason. Let, let's be honest. This is the in reason. In fact, interestingly, I, no international economists are supporting it. I'm not sure, but no yeah, international economists actually support it. But I think it. over time, I think, I think as, is. just let me, over time and including now, there are economists, as the, as the trend comes out, as the facts come out, this might be seen, and we were talking about Harvard Business School, so this might be seen as one of the master strokes, both politically and economically. No, but you haven't answered yet, Professor Bhalla, the question raised about the politics of corruption. You asked about the economics of it. But this fact, I mean, there's a whole issue about these electoral bonds which are coming up. And again, opposition parties Thank have you. raised that. And this whole point about... Can you, on the one hand, advocate uh, being anti-corruption, but yet, okay. when they can win me, elections, act, have them join the party? Yeah, okay. Let me explicitly answer the question. Look, any such thing, you have to look at what's the mean level. Okay? The, you cannot get to zero corruption. I don't think the BJP is claiming, or should claim, in my view, that they are a zero corruption party. So, as an economist, I look at the mean level. Is it the case that the mean level, you know, uh, of the BJP, of the AAP party, of the Congress party, whoever I'm comparing, what is the mean and the magnitude? So if it is, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other, both equally bad. That's the judgment all of us have to make. That is it the same? Six. Does it feel the same? In my mind, and I've looked at this issue quite seriously, it is not the same. That is not to say that the BJP is devoid of corruption. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not, as has been pointed out. But it is not anywhere close to the magnitude of the previous administration. Shorya uh, Dhoval, can I bring you in on that? Do you think that joining the BGP is a Ganga Snan, even for politicians who were accused of CBI cases? I mean, Mukul Roy, as recently as about four months ago, uh, Sukram, who has been a symbol of the BGP, has had uh, as a corrupt figure, suddenly gets cleansed when he joins the BGP. And how would you also, because I mean, the, the Wire had written and said that, you know, that you're lobbying, you issued a response to that, saying there's no question, but how would you answer that, since you're here talking about uh, how the BGP is standing against corruption? So, you know, uh, she mentioned about that there are many other ways to have tackled the malaise of corruption. And the Congress was in power for 10 years. They could have tried all those methods that they are saying that uh, there could have been propagated those methods. 
if you look across the political so debate in this, voted out. I mean, that's right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So today to say, well, this was a wrong method, and there were other methods that you could have done. Um, well, you know, you had the time. If you, uh, my point is that if I look across the political spectrum today, on the narrative of corruption, it is with the BJP that is leading the argument. Everybody else is reacting to it, and that's fine. You can do that politically and argue it. But let me put a counter argument. Okay, if not this, what else would you have done? What else can the Aam Aadmi Party do to tackle corruption in India, in Delhi, that demonstrates to the rest of the country that we have a better model to be able to go after? And should we be able to, should, were we in power in Delhi, we would follow this and therefore, uh, and, and therefore seek votes on that basis. Mm -hmm. After all, BJP is going all about town trying to say, here is our model of fighting corruption. Uh, it comes with casualties. You, as you said, there are potential positive and negative outcomes of it but continue to vote for us and we'll continue to be relentless about it yes, now so 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 that's that's at least the first part of your argument uh, question the second part of your question which is that well does the be the, there's a very fact that some of these people who have joined the BJP or the certain accusations including about our foundation that you know that does that does that uh, does that may you know does that merit well in, in you know in in political in we know in political debates right I mean people can say anything what they want I and mean, that's fine that's democracy um, but the the evidence of that gets proved either in the courts of in the in the in their court so all those who make accusations must logically then pursue them in the in the court of law and substantiate it or if that's not the way then the other way is that if you're fighting a perception battle well then take it out of the people and Can prove I? to the people the perception and that was my earlier argument was that despite taking um, actions that uh, by the way are uh, may be inconvenient to people i mean think of it yourself why would somebody take a political gamble of that magnitude when after earlier after all you were continuing on a on a political role so if if people are still supporting you after that then this is a question that the other political parties must be asking is that do they have another substitute model or an alternative model to go after the corruption but so, sorry, yes so, 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 mentioned Ahmadi party let me tell you that uh, from which yardstick admission of sukhram a convicted fellow is justification will get. Sukhram is a convicted fellow. Secondly, you are talking about the, the Mr. Prime Minister setting the narrative. The last 13 years he ruled Gujarat, there was no Loka Yukta. For what reasons? Why you, they, they, no, no, let, let, me, let me complete. They had gone to the Supreme Court, fought and fought and fought that there should not be appointment of Loka Yukta in Gujarat. For what reasons? So, Lokpal will. No, let me. No, but are you saying no, no, that? Why did why did I not interrupt? Sorry, I did not. Is Lokpal is not going to help my point. Sorry, I did not. Let Ashutosh finish. Sorry, I did not. Let Ashutosh finish. So I don't say Ashutosh. Lokpal is a minister currently. Lokpal is a law. Lokpal is a law. Lokpal is a law. Is a is an anti-corruption institution which India has created in the last parliament. Why till now there is no appointment of Lokpal? If you are so particular that you are fighting with corruption, please appoint Lokpal tomorrow. Why you have taken SNAZ Anti-Corruption Bureau from Delhi government in the 49 days, there were everybody, it's a part of the historical document that the policemen were scared to take bribe from uh, people on the, on the road. This year, this time when our government came, you have snatched away that Anti-Corruption Bureau. Australian, Australian uh, uh, channels are talking about Adani's corruption. There is a big racket, there is a big big scam over there and he's the closest associate Mr. Prime Minister and he's still talking about that Prime Minister What logic? What logic? Please answer me why Adani should not be investigated? Why why Sukram should be admitted? Why Mukul Rai should be should not be admitted? Why Lokpal should not be appointed? Why Lokal did was not appointed in in, in, in Gujarat? Why anti-corruption bureau was snatched away from us? Shori, Please tell me. You have and why? Why Billa Sahara papers where Mr. Prime Minister's name is there? Why it was not investigated? Though I have to say, Shorya is Please not. Please tell me. I have to say, Shorya is not part of the BJP. He's not a politician. No, no, I'm but not. I have to Since say that. I have to say that Shorya, you opened the Pandora's box of corruption. I'm yes. going to let you answer that. His but the point you do want to make is also that. Mr. Chidambaram, hmm. who Arvind Kejriwal named as one of the most corrupt ministers, <coughs> is now the defending let's, the Aadmi Party in the Supreme Court. So let's say the hypocrisies of all this. Let's debate that. I think. Lokpal. I'll only comment on the Lokpal thing. Uh, the Parliament has passed it. And the Lokpal passed by us had not been approved by the and Prime I Minister. And let me Office. just say let that in. that is symbolic and completely representative of the old 
washed out ways of fighting corruption. I don't Which think if and when it's implemented, it'll do anything. I, I mean, we said it also. Let, let BJP no, but we, say that. I, I, I don't support Lokpal. Let let Shori just respond. I'm, I'm going to go across back to the demonetization yes, issue. Yeah, I'm not saying but you. yeah, I think demonetization is the issue we're debating here. But I think uh, Shori, you did open the Pandora's box by starting by saying, "Look, this is against corruption." So we do have to yeah, answer that or whatever. No, yeah. No, no. So you know, we, we can, you know, in terms of Ashutosh's argument um, that you know, in each of these specific cases. What has happened? I leave it to the BJP to answer. Yes. But, no, that's a bit no, 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 wait, 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 no, 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 no with how will I judge? You know, uh, yeah. every evidence is anecdotal. So you you could you could disagree. You could agree. How do you judge that the people of this country, whom he represents, who have put him there? When by the way, they have not put him there to go and clear files or to or to be a manager. They have put him there as the leader of this country for the same reason. The people of Gujarat voted him. He didn't implement Lokpal bill. Okay, I disagree. You disagree vehemently. But despite the fact that the people of Gujarat thought you should go become the prime minister, now. He has included Sukram, or he has bought uh, uh, Mukul Roy. Okay, let's say if the people of Himachal vote him back no, no. and say is that, that if that no, is no, no, an no, argument, wait, wait. that Shahabuddin, no, but let him, no, but no, but Ashutosh, I think I am not talking about Ashutosh. Let him let finish what he's saying, and then asking, let me just go. There are only two here. ways. One is that if you make a case of corruption, please go to the court of law and enforce it in the court of law and prove it. And and there is one way that by which it is proved that this person and enforce it. The second way is fight the battle of perception, say, okay, courts take time to enforce in India. It's all a battle of perception. If it is your argument versus my argument, then the only way we can judge the, the, the argument is, uh, uh, is how many people subscribe can to I, it. So, I, you know, you decide which metric you want to play on. Can I just because if Mr. Sukram is, 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 is convicted but out on bail uh, or whatever or out, I don't know where he, why, why, why but he for is. Serve, but for instance, let me just ask and Shorya, uh, they'll have to ask you because again, uh, the wire raises and I think the Congress mm -hmm. party kept raising this and when had a press conference that when, for instance, if you say the Congress and Robert Vadra, then when the Congress turns around and says, what about, uh, what about Shorya Doval and uh, what about Jay Shah, what about Shorya Doval, when the wire turns around. But when you talk of the battle of perception, didn't the BGP use that very conveniently in opposition? I agree with what you're saying. Do it in the court of law opposition, but you all did it when you all were in opposition. No, wait. She is not BGP. No, well, and, wait. and what did we say in our in our <laughs> no, response? And, and what did we also say in the case of the in the case of Congress? Right, in the case of the Congress, the BGP took the matters, even in the case of Mr. Jesha, he took it to the court of law, said, okay, we filed a defamation, let's d argue it in the court of law. Right. Let's, not, uh, let's not fight only a perception battle, but also fight it in the court of law. So as far as the BJP is concerned, it has no problem in going to taking all these cases of corruption, and, and they rightly should, if they believe that the BJP is corrupt, or they should take it to the court of law, the courts are there for that purpose. Well, I, I, if I, on the other hand, Sonia, question, why did BJP take... Why so you are not going to file any defamation case. No, that's not a separate <laughs> matter, but you know, you know we, the point I'm trying to make so is that, I, that if we, we whatever we do in the court of law is one way of proving it right, and so those I'm who are convicted must bear the punishment under the law okay just, so just I'm going to let Hesh Vyas come in so no, so no, so it didn't make a seconds. difference to BGP I will be, so I will be more than happy to learn from Mr. Jai Shah how he can make 80 crores in a year's time. I also want to earn 80 crores in a year's time. No, to be fair, Amit From Shah, to be fair, Amit Shah did address those allegations and speak out about it. But let's, I think, leave it now. But let's go beyond this. To I want to get Mahesh Vyas in because Mahesh Vyas just on the numbers. Let's just address this, looking at the numbers and facts. I know you've been uh, waiting patiently in Mumbai. Do you find any evidence that demonetization, besides the economic nature of what its impact was, what do you think was the big gain of it? And did you find any evidence that corruption actually comes down or economically it's been easier to do business in a less corrupt way with this. I'm not sure if you'll actually look to that matrix, but do you, have you found any evidence of that at all? Uh, I don't measure corruption, so <laughs> I can't say what has happened to corruption, excepting like any stray person can talk about corruption, which is quite pointless. So um, what I have seen after demonetization is that there was a big increase in the expectations. So people, by and large, uh, did welcome the move of demonetization, all adjectives like a bold move and a very decisive move, etc., do reflect in an index that we measure called the Consumer Sentiments Index. Mm -hmm. And that really shot up very sharply uh, in November and then in December as well. 
but as demonetization uh, period ended that index dropped so the great expectations from demonetizations at least from the perception point of view seem to have skyrocketed soon after its announcement or at least a week or two after the announcement and then after December 31st it fell and by now uh, a year from demonetization consumer sentiments which actually you know in a sense says many things into one simple index and therefore it's a very powerful indicator today the consumer sentiment index is at its lowest level since we started uh, measuring it so which for is a long when did time, you begin measuring it uh, consumers <coughs> had greater expectations uh, january 2016 mm-hmm. the, the further more important point is that for a long time and right from jan 16 onwards the one component of the index which is the expectations index was always higher than the index of current conditions whereas from march 17 onwards systematically the expectations index has dropped and is lower than the current conditions which means that for a long time indians did have a great greater expectation on the future mm-hmm. so they were they were expecting things will turn around but i see that that is not there anymore so well, this is also a reflection of expectations of demonetization and uh, a reflection of its failure to deliver well also so gst may complicate that but just to, to this a final no, thoughts on the dialogue tonight uh, go ahead professor prior to that i think we are going to make a major mistake mm-hmm. if we attribute any economic circumstance that has happened to demonetization so for example mahesh mentioned consumer sentiment and i i take his word for it i'm asking him and i i think there is a a strong correlation uh, which has been observed in other countries um and it's somewhat shockingly surprising there's never observed in india or mentioned in india mm-hmm. that you look at real interest rates what they do to the economy and what they do to consumer sentiment there is not a country in the world at any time which has seen a record rise in real interest rates and sentiment has improved so all i'm putting on the table that there is something a lot more called the RBI <laughs> and its actions that may be determining you know it should at least be discussed i mean here we are the discussing on the economy going down the and nobody villain. mentions interest rates the only in a country villain called in your piece no but i also want to ask final thoughts the dialogue uh, shorya <laughs> doval what's always interesting and uh, i've observed this over the years that in india we gloom and doom i mean if we uh, listen to the opposition we are probably in the worst situation ever but when you look at what say foreign institutional investors and again uh, that's something perhaps your fund deals with or you see uh, internationally you see whether or it's world the imf or the business. or the world bank ease of doing business there it's all optimism what's the balance <laughs> because both i mean there has to be some uh, middle level somewhere no i mean we you know we won't over generalize but i think the very fact is that uh, unfortunately the discourse um, uh, in 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 the, in the country has become primarily uh, very negative you know all the con- uh, we, we constantly are arguing and we can't see positivity in anything so but actually as as you know as 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 you rightly said practitioners and probably you know there are people in some parts of the world that are seeing that and we are we seeing evidence of that we're seeing that in terms of greater investment we're seeing that in terms of ease of business you know rankings etc so fine in tv debates and in you know journal op-eds and all you can keep writing and i think that's one of the reasons that you know i presume that people who are who are who are working on the ground aren't paying much attention to what we are talking <laughs> and that's ref- being reflected in their results so i think let the people who are acting continue to act and those who can have the luxury of talking continue to talk F- final thoughts i'm going to give you sushmita and ashutosh that bit is true go by what international go by international investments go by election results go by what indices or data but you're separating truth from hype some of the what you all are saying doesn't ring entirely true why is there negativity why for instance would india it's, it's or not, the opposition not welcome the world bank is a big business report it's not negativity there was a narrative that congress is opposing the gst we eventually supported it we put our arguments forth and we supported it look what's happened to gst when they said pass the black money bill we passed it unanimously in the parliament let's not forget that but i i i think i think that what we need to look at is that prime minister set himself some goals and everybody has paid a price for it but by no measure by no measure can you say that we've achieved uh, more than what we have lost that's the point i want to make and that's bad policy
Right. Ashutosh, final thoughts. See, if Soria is saying that there is a negativity, I, I must say this, that it is the Prime Minister who sets the narrative for the country. If there is, if so there, you if accept that, that, that? I said if there is only a negativity in the TV, co in conference, in these TV debates and uh, England op-eds. There is, there is no be, negativity in the country. So, so yeah, le, le, you know. Let's be gracious enough to accept that TV debates is the part of our democracy. <laughs> Indian constitution no, is given that. that. So let's not talk it. Uh, so many BGP that, ministers no, are very effective no, spokespersons no, 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 on TV but, debates. No, 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 many BGP ministers are spokespersons on TV debates. Then election results have always been different. That's true, Ashutosh. Go by television debates and it's always the opposition which wins every election. Exactly. You, should, you should give me the credit being a former uh, TV uh, professional. I know how much negativity is created by which political party and how much it is, it is, it is campaigned or, and done all that. The point is very simple today. The point is whether Sujit Balla is a great economist, I have no quarrel with that. Shorya is a part of the think tank, I have no quarrel with that. But the one point which everybody in this country wants to know and the globally also, why Indian economy has come down to 5.7 percent. From 9.1 percent to 2, from 9.1 percent to 5.7. That answer BJP is not willing to give. Why? Is it because of the demonetization? Is it because of the demonetization? Is it because of GST? Or is it because se several other factors which is contributing? But Ashutosh, because there is a three letter word called RBI. Sir, let me come. 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 No, but to be fair, to be fair we can also come again after the next two quarter results come out. You don't have to, let's see. Let me, yeah. let me complete. And this 5.7 is also thankfully because of the fact that today petrol is sold at the rupees of 70. In, the, in Mumbai, this is 50. God forbid if the petrol has been, has been selling in the international market at $150 per barrel. There was a time when this petrol was, was selling at, right. the, at the rate so of 29. Well, let's see because crude oil so prices are, are going fortunate. up again in the Saudi uh, shakedown. So let's see how that actually thinks. But we do have to end here. It's been a fascinating debate, uh, not just on demonetization as we've seen, but one year after the demonetization of the Dhaka, the jury is still very much out. Let's see how it unfolds. Thanks very much, all of you, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much.